And we are back on this Tuesday morning. 51 degrees. Hold on, Stanley. Hold that thought. 51 degrees feels really, really nice out there. Enjoy today. A beautiful day in store for sure. Plenty of sunshine with high temperatures around 84, 85 degrees. Just ditto for tomorrow. Looks like we're in store for some rain over the weekend. Going to be a rainy weekend, but maybe that'll give us enough time this week to get a lot done out there. All right, Chef, before we talk about the rodeo, which, by the way, we'll... we'll Street dance is a week from tonight, and then the yeah. other thing. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Let's talk about right now what's happening around. Like you just said, though, things go on. There's some Continue on. You know, even Saturday games. night with everything going on, we had the Relay for Life. Uh, you've got schools here in the county competing in ball, ball games. Uh, so, you know, life has to go on. And if, and yesterday was seemed almost the quietest you'd seen down in that particular area because so many of the people that had been victims of the tornado, they had gone back to work. I mean, so many of them. And so it was very. Dustin was out of town, town Sunday, so Fred Lackey filled in. And I got to give a shout out to Fred. He did an amazing. His house got hit. Yeah. So he had to leave early. He had already agreed to do this for senior, senior day or whatever it was down yeah. there for those people over, older than me. <laughs> they had it down there. They, nice. they tried to get me to stand up because a senior citizen supposed to be over 55. 55 and a month. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Well, you know, Brother Fred's not a stranger to tornadoes. Oh, he, I know. He, he was heavily involved when the tornado come through in 74. And as a matter of fact, my wife asked me last night if I seen him. So if he's listening, I'll try to bump into you sometimes here, here today or tomorrow. But, but he, I hadn't he, had a chance to keep finding him. He did a thing on detours in life, talking about this and how they watched the tornado come in. And, you know, it was... Uh, I don't think his house got seriously damaged. He had a lot of trees down, so he had to leave early. Without but, power uh, for a week. Stanley, you've probably been just about like sheriff, every nook and cranny in Limestone County. How do you assess the damage as of today? Well, there's, there's been a lot of improvement. I rode down yesterday afternoon just in the Clemens community, just look at you all of everything didn't have time, but but uh, it was unreal how much improvements had been made in cleaning up and all these things. And uh, we're we we'll, we adopted. Uh, Chose to take the uh, bid, low bid. The state association of county commissions has a statewide bid on debris pickup, so right. we agreed to go with that. Bid. Right, so yeah. what now? What are, basically is the county in the hole? Three million dollars uh, for cleanup and stuff, be, or more than that? Five? Probably that. Would depend on how you look at public public services. I think it's just four million. I believe. Now, well, you, services. since Obama did this as a federal disaster, will y'all recoup any of that money? And how, Mike, you might know, whichever one y'all knows the answer, who, how do the people get a service from that, Mike, or Stanley, well, either one of them? We will, we will recoup overtime, those kinds of things like that, uh, fuel, uh, repairs, truck, stuff like that, to haul and move stuff. Yes, we will recoup some of that. And you're probably referring to some of the FEMA type right. uh, assistance that uh, will be given to individuals. That area should register right. with FEMA. That's indicator daily. I talked with uh, Rita yesterday at EMA, and uh, FEMA, of course, I think people thought that as soon as they declared a disaster, FEMA was going to have boots on the ground with tables set up and start registering people. They have not announced exactly when and where they will be registering people, but once they are, that's where people will go to. And then, of course, farmers uh, go through the ASCS office because they've uh, you know, people had fences down, they got their crops destroyed, uh, mm -hmm. damaged, uh, you know, there'll be government assistance for that also. You know, the, you can actually go through Daphne at EMA system too. They have some victim kits that you can go and fill out. And, 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 they, and they will be, if people will, uh, if you got Facebook, but also, they've also been constantly emailing the news media, letting them know what the status is as far as when and where people can go and, and sign up. All right, Mike, I'm about ready to go to some of the video from your helicopter I took uh, this past, this becoming a habit with us getting together every time there's damage doing that. How did you know there was that? Had you already been up that morning? Because, I mean, the fog, it was barely lifting. How did you know there was that much damage? How did you see all that? Along with all my deputies, I was out right in the middle of it all Monday night when it was coming through, and prior to it coming through, and then uh, trying to uh, get out and check on people in their houses. Matter of fact, between the <laughs> some of the tornadoes there, I got stuck in somebody's yard, so I hope they're not mad at me for damaging their yard, but there was, there on Holt Sprager Road, there was trees everywhere trying to get around to check a house that was heavily damaged. Uh, I just sunk down in the yard, and luckily, uh, and I don't know who, uh, remember who it was, but whoever in the white truck that had the three log chains to hook to my truck and pulled me out <laughs> before that other tornado hit there and wiped us out, I, I really appreciate it. Wow. What you got to get out of jail free card. <laughs> <laughs> what about... Uh, 
anything surprised you about any of the damage, either one of y'all? This is the aerial from Bay Hill. This is where we first started shooting uh, Tuesday morning about 8 o'clock. Uh, and it shows it, immense damage. Going to the condo somewhere destroyed there to Marina. Marina is like an 80% loss, according to Bubba Doss, the new owner out there, who was just getting that thing ready to reopen Day. Memorial Day, you know? Anything surprised y'all about any of the damage? Well, I don't think I saw was that storm was really widespread like, I mean, wider than the one in, in 11. I know I was a little more familiar than the days I thought it was like a mile, a mile and a half. That storm was, looked like to me it was, there were multiple. y'all saw it from the air, but two or three miles looked like wide. It was very widespread. Well, I mean, really, if you consider from, uh, and I don't know how many, I don't know, I'm not a weatherman, so I don't know how you classify tornadoes, but I know when that thing first started coming off, it'd be like a, look like it would be one over here and one over here. I mean, it coming out of that cloud, looked like there'd be, be you know, uh, clouds coming down, and uh, it wasn't just one big vortex there all together. It was multiple, uh, you know, splitters. When you see that damage from the air, Sheriff, Stanley both you say, how on earth did only two people die in this? Really? You would think there'd be 20 or 30 deaths in this. Mm -hmm. Every storm house I know of was packed full of folks. There, there was good warning, that, uh, you know, the weather service, uh, you know, the TV the stations. Station, the Sunday, TV stations did a fabulous job. They did, plus there had been advisors, uh, advisors sent out. When I, when I was at home watching the news Sunday night prior to the storm and uh, knowing what we'd already been advised by EMA, uh, Monday, uh, I called and had all my supervisors come in Monday morning so we could go in and start getting ready. I had a bad feeling. I don't know why, but yeah. I mean, but, but the fact that they were telling us that, hey, if the conditions come together, this is going to be a bad storm. And so we, we got our people together and was ready, uh, you know, as, as you can be anytime. You're never really ready for something like this, but we, we had the boots on the ground to have out there to try to help warn people and, and assist But in people. a sense, we really were ready because of the experience that we've all gone through. Everyone knew exactly what they needed to grab, go, do, and they did it. Well, and, and you know, we've got an increased number of shelters here in Limestone mm -hmm. County now, too. I the commission has worked yeah. with... Uh, with uh, like EMA, and yeah. we've got those, you know, the churches. There was a lot of churches that people were in their basements. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, people with have safe houses. So I think a lot of people prepared and, yeah. and tried to take cover. What do these people? Thank what you. advice have y'all got for these people that are homeless now? And you know, right now they're saying uh, one out of every kid, every 10, 11 students. I heard Dr. Sis say this yesterday on 48. That go to Limestone. I mean, go to Clements and Blue Spring School are homeless. One out of 11. And, and, you know, and I'm sure some of those that they classify as homeless has kin folks they could probably stay with, but that's not going, you know, that's just a short-term thing. Yeah, I mean, it's you a know, long that, term here. You know, that's one reason why FEMA will be coming in to provide and you know, decide what all assistance that they can, they can provide, but you've got Red Cross, you've got Salvation Army, you've got individuals within the community. People are, people are out there trying to help folks identify folks, and if anybody knows of anyone that's falling through the cracks, Get in touch with me or, e or, F or EMA. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll try to find out what we can do for them. All right. Stan, I know you guys. That, that decoration that we got right. was very important because one is debris pickup and one to provide for in cases like that where the folks are homeless, didn't have an injury. And, and another thing, our system worked that time. I mean, I was, I was in the storm house too. Uh, it, when they tell you it's over there, you better take, you better go take One it. One statement you made to me the other day, last Tuesday morning I was out there, and then it was in the paper too over the weekend. If you're going on sightsee, go to Disneyland. Disney World in Orlando, Disneyland in California, or go somewhere else. Is that a big problem? You know, I guess that's just a redneck's way of putting it, but, but telling people to stay the heck out of the area if you don't, if you're not someone that lives down there or down there to provide assistance. If you're, if you're not going to be part, part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. Get the heck out of the way so folks that, that do want to come down there and work and help uh, can do it. But, you know, there was, traffic was critically, uh, was, you know, down to one lane in most areas. You know, extra cars down there would limit uh, people trying to get down there to help. It would uh, limit uh, the, the uh, our response time for the emergency vehicles and everything else. So, you know, mm -hmm. people just need to be mindful of that. Look, you watch Jamie Cooper and they can see all the damage. They ain't got a crap <laughs> down there. That's when I'm right. on, when I ain't getting knocked off the lightning up on Capshaw Mountain, but a couple other things, Mike, out, out that way, you had a curfew. Was looting a problem this year? No, no. I mean, just because someone may have seen something on Facebook does not mean we had a problem. We had the probably the least amount of problem from standpoint of thefts in that area that you could ever ask for. We had some 
a couple of instances where someone called and thought somebody, like we had a guy called in someone had stole somebody's trailer. Well, turns out that uh, the husband had let somebody borrow the trailer. But uh, we have not had a problem with, with that. We've had one or two thefts. We've, had a, uh, we've also had one or two uh, reports that, you know, that are very suspect as to whether they're valid reports or not. But uh, uh, thefts and looting has been a minimum. But the reason for the, uh, the curfew was it give us a greater ability to make sure that we protected people's property that, that was uh, not secure out there, uh, let people know that you know, if they're going to be down there, they're going to be stopped. But we've uh, relifted that, but we still have more law enforcement officers present there in, in the immediate uh, vicinity of the tornado. So if anybody's thinking about going down there stealing, you got a great chance of getting caught because there's going to be a whole lot more police. One other question before we start talking about the farmer's market and then back to the rodeo. Yeah. Your friend Bill Davis, he gets damaged yet he's out there cooking and providing food for a bunch of people. As is Clements Bay, all of the churches stepped forward and did their thing. But Bill got his place damaged. It wasn't just damaged, I, you know, from all <laughs> and indications. Then he, I saw him out there cooking the other day when we went, we were going to Rogersville, Tom. I saw him early uh, Tuesday morning, right after the storm, and he was uh, kind of sifting through and uh, getting all the uh, the foodstuffs that were not learned from the damage to his building. And his building probably had to be leveled and completely rebuilt if he's able to. And uh, I don't mean to be, I mean, Bill had no insurance on that property there. So, I mean, it's going to be a heck of a loss to him. But uh, he immediately took all of his grills, went over to where we'd set up right. for feeding people. And all, I'm talking about Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, from prior to daylight till well after dark, he cooked. I mean, and fed uh, uh, everything he had that, uh, and did it for free and did it just as a volunteer. So my hat's off to somebody like that. And, and there's a lots of instances of people that really gave and they were un so unselfish what it. they gave and still doing it. All right, Stan, it's changed to the Limestone County Farmer's Market open today. Opens today. Now, what do you expect? Right. Uh, not a big, normally it's not a big turnout for it, but it's the, mostly they'll... It's already open. They'll open 10 minutes ago. Yeah, they'll, they'll sell plants, you know, tomato plants, those things like that. Um, Jellies and those things like that. All right, switching sub something good coming up. A rodeo, 32nd <laughs> annual. You getting tired? No, but I'm gonna tell you what. <laughs> all my people are gonna be tired after all the overtime and all the extra hours uh, working after the storm, and then uh, the fact that uh, we're in a full swing rodeo mode uh, this week, uh, Saturday. The rodeo parade starts at one from the uh, arena. Everybody come on out. I think that somebody told me we might have the Lady Cadaver equestrian team. We're trying to draw all the Jimmy's business to our rodeo. <laughs> but, you might come out and say, well, you got a poster. Well, right? you know, you, you, we, we can't uh, show you the poster until they come right through town. But, I suppose you're going to go do a story. Anything different in this year's rodeo lineup than in the past? Uh, not really, other than the fact, you know, it's, it's uh, I, I think last year we've been hard to beat. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, Except for the rain. Uh, well, you know, hey, it's, tough, it's a little fun when it's muddy anyway, but uh, we've got a uh, full slate of contestants I'm sure that will be here, and then uh, our street dance on uh, next Tuesday night on the square. Jeff Whitlow Band will be playing. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, any lady, Debbie will kill me if I don't mention the Rodeo Queen Luncheon, which will be Saturday the 17th at noon. Oh, That's nice when our luncheon. Rodeo Queen contestants will be modeling. They'll be giving their speeches. It's a real classy uh, thing. That it's, Is Helen Duncan too old to be Rodeo Queen? <laughs> Helen probably has been a rodeo queen many times in her life. I love Helen. <laughs> Shout out to I Helen. Saw She's my buddy. She was at the Caney and all them doing that the other day. All right. Anything else, guys, before I close this out? I know y'all back. We'll start the debris pickup shortly, okay. maybe next week or something like that. So. Right. Call and check your insurance. I'm sure policies. we'll be seeing a lot of you in the next week. And, too. and hey, load your tin and scrap and take it to to one of our scrap places because that stuff brings a premium. A friend of mine sold something yeah. yesterday. And it's Stanley, you brought bag. up something important. Four weeks from today, what happens? Election. <laughs> Election. Four weeks from Four today weeks. on Gloria's birthday. Ah. Oh, June 4th. We'll be here June. No, it's June, June 2nd. 2nd. I mean, second, yeah. June 2nd. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about it until coming up in November. November. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll come back with Bill Matthews in just a second. Y'all hang on.